Have you seen yourself on video before? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me show you somebody else hitting from an open stance. What I want you to notice is from her ready position, as she gets set to hit the ball, even though her feet are in an open position, mm -hmm. I want you to look at how her shoulders Shoulder are turn. turned yeah. relative to the baseline. Yeah. So she's starting with this big turn, even though she's not gonna step into this shot because she wants to use this stored energy to unwind mm -hmm. and provide the force behind the shot. So look at the logos on her pants and her shirt, how they're both facing, pants are facing towards mm -hmm. the camera, the shirt is facing kind of back towards mm -hmm. the camera a little bit. Now before she even hits the ball, I want you to watch both of those logos and watch how much they transition before she hits the ball. So at contact, they're both facing forwards. Even though she has not stepped into the ball, she's hit this off of her outside foot from an open stance, but her hips have turned 90 degrees mm -hmm. and her shoulders have turned past 90 degrees because she started turned a little bit past perpendicular and she hits, whoa, how did I skip? Sorry about that. And she hits with her shoulders past parallel with the baseline. Mm -hmm. So she's started really turned this way and she's come all the way around to really far in the other direction because that's sometimes what's actually providing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'll notice sometimes when I, especially when I hit a weak shot is that I'm hitting the ball, making contact back here. Sure, that happens a lot for people. And what that means is the body never transitioned forwards. There wasn't any of that rotation before the ball got mm -hmm. there. And so the arm ends up having to kind of do yeah. all the work because the body got stuck. Yeah. Let me show you your swing now. And we're going to compare to the, the pro examples we, uh, we just looked at. And the first thing we're going to notice is, or I'd, I'd like to kind of focus on, is the, the use of the body. Because that should be the engine. <clears throat> so as you set up, I want you to notice so you're in an open stance, mm -hmm. just like Caroline was. Yeah. So your hips are not quite perpendicular yeah. and your shoulders are probably about even with your hips. Mm -hmm. So that means like right out of the gate, much more responsibility is gonna fall on the small parts of your body if you wanna hit a strong shot. Mm -hmm. Because the body isn't as turned and loaded, something else has to fill in the gap if you wanna hit your best shot or like yeah. your strongest shot. So to me, if you want to advance your forehand, this is the easiest way to do it, okay. is we, we need more stored energy with the shoulders and we need more stored energy with the hips. I have no problem at all with the open stance. I think if that's your preferred way of hitting, that's totally fine, mm -hmm. as long as it's not the only way you can hit. If you can step in, which I'm pretty sure you do at least yeah. once here, mm -hmm. then, and you use it appropriately, like in the right scenario, I don't mind you preferring the open stance. I think that's totally fine. Okay. But we got to use the body ef effectively within the open stance. Okay. Let's start off in the middle of the service line, Susan. Okay. And to begin with, you and I are going to practice together finding your new preparation position. Okay. So go ahead and start off in whatever stance you're like most comfortable with. Like just prepare, pretend you're getting ready to hit a forehand. And we're just simply going to practice going from a ready position to that open stance with your new coil or preparation position. And that position is gonna be hips as close to perpendicular as possible and shoulders at least perpendicular. If we can get a little bit past the hips, that would be fantastic. So let's just practice going from ready position with no coil or load to a full preparation position. Yep, let's just, that looks good. One more. Good. All right, check this out. So here is you like an hour ago. Mm -hmm. So from movement, here was your setup or kind of preparation position. And now here's the one that you just did a second ago. Mm -hmm. Which one looks like it's ready to provide more energy or yeah, for force? Sure. For sure. <laughs> this one, all, the one on the right. Pretty intense. Intense is a great word. There's a lot of, of stored energy here yeah. and like force that we can use to unwind and produce energy into the ball. 
And remember, like the thing you asked for was, I want the ball to be more penetrating. Yes. I want to go through the ball. This rotational force is what's going to provide that energy. Whereas here on the right, we don't have nearly as much stored in the first place, and the racket is so low, all we can really do is just kind of spin the ball over to the other side. Yeah. There's not enough stored energy to drive it even if we wanted to. Yeah. Uh, that's not fair. We could. It just wouldn't be nearly as strong as yeah. this one on the left. Mm -hmm. So it's, kind of, it's all relative. So let's practice this a little bit more. Okay. Start to add the rest of the swing to it nice and slowly and smoothly. And then we'll start to hit a couple balls while getting to that position. Okay. Make sense? Yep. All right. Let's practice just without the forward swing a few more times. Just practice the coil position. Yep. And then we'll start adding the forward swing. Okay, now let's start slowly transitioning from the coil through the rest of the swing. Just nice and slow and smooth. Good, nice job. Yeah, good Susan. Big coil, passive arm. One more like that. Good, yeah, great job. I want you to watch that because it's just way stronger and athletic. I'm just going to play you through like the last three or four. And I just want you to watch yourself move. And look at how much longer and uh, how much more of a ramp there is in terms of like room to accelerate the racket now. There's a much bigger initial turn and rotation. Hips are still getting to 90. Shoulders are still a little bit past, so that's fantastic. And now we have this long runway that we can pull the racket through. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to let you practice two of them just to remind yourself how far to go. And then I'll toss you three balls in a row. I just want you to do your best to go to the same coil position on all of them. So two practice ones. Yep. On the practice ones, keep your eyes over here. All right, here we go. Three balls, same, same thing. It's fine. Same coil. Ooh, nice, Susan. Coil. Notice how much more drive is on the ball now? Yeah. Don't worry about it going in or not. Just keep relaxing and making that swing. Two practice ones. Coil and unwind. Good. Three hits. Shoulders a little bit past perpendicular. Good. Good. I just want you to get a sense real quick of the difference. Uh, it's not quite apples and apples, but I just want you to watch. This is earlier this morning when the ball machine was hitting to you. I just want you to watch in general. Yeah. Like, kind of like answer it in your own head, like the question, or you can talk aloud loud too if you want. Where is the power coming from? My, my arm. This, this is why yeah. coaches are always yelling at you to, you know, yeah. to like step in and like, they think that the solution is going to be to just not do open stance and then you're going to turn more. But whether you're doing open stance or stepping in or whatever, the body still has got to coil okay. and can coil regardless of your stance. Okay. So I just want you to visually contrast that with yeah, definitely the see how different yeah. aesthetically this looks. Yeah. Now we've got tons of energy rotating. And sometimes your arm still gets a little bit rigid and gets a little bit tight, but it, at least now we have the force coming from the body that if you do relax, can be delivered you know, smoothly. Okay. See how different that looks? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the one that we want okay. in a nutshell. And we'll learn how to refine it, but it's all got to start from here. Okay. Shoulders past the hips. Yep. Stay relaxed. Good. Way to stay relaxed, Susan. That's my bad. Good job. Let's go back to the baseline. I know that when you, when you launch one back to the back curtain, I know inside you're like, oh, I want to be like careful on the next one. That's when you have to really make yourself stay relaxed. Shoulders past the hips. That was a little bit short. There you go, that's a better one. 
Good. Now that it's starting to feel a little bit more real, it's like I'm actually like hitting the ball to you and you're having to move a little bit, we're starting to slide back a little bit, which is totally normal. That's just the way it always, always happens. So here's the last four that you just hit. And I want you to watch the, the, the first one. So here's after your, your shadow swing, which is looking fantastic, by the way. Great turn past yeah. your hips. Really loose, passive arm. I love how you're breathing out through the, the swing. It's really loose and relaxed. Now watch the coil here on my first. It's okay. Mm -hmm. The hips aren't quite 90 degrees and your shoulders are about parallel to your hips. So it's, it's better, like you said, better than where we came from, but it's not the, yeah. the full position. And it's because it's starting to be a little bit more real life. So your subconscious is just like, oh sweet, time to run the forehand program. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going back to your old, your old habit a little bit. Now compare that to the last one you hit which is this one, look at this position. So now the shoulders are passed. It'd be nice if the hips were a little yeah. bit further, but this is still, here, let me show you real quick, just for comparison. Here's your previous setup position. And look at that, man. You've watched a lot of good tennis. You, you know what good tennis looks like, right? I mean, aesthetically, that one on the left is just no contest. Mm -hmm. It's so much stronger and, and more athletic and ready to hit a good shot. Now notice here, your hips are about the same. Mm -hmm. It's just that now your Shoulder. shoulders are, are turned past. Yeah. If we can get, get the, the hips, hips a little further, that would yeah. be better. But this is still, this is adequate now. Like now we actually have enough support from the, the big parts. Mm -hmm. We can hit a, a solid fundamental shot from, from that position. Whereas this is just gonna be more arm you can see it. You can see how your arm and your hand are kind of uh, initiating into it and having to push a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is much more pull coming from your shoulders coming around. Shoulders at 90. I'm sorry, hips at 90. Shoulders a little bit past. Yep. Ready? Good job. Good. Good job. Good. So on the left is what you did the last time we stopped it and looked. So this is that one where we were like, wow, the hips are about the same, but the shoulders are at least are strong, you know, are in a stronger position. Um, look at the, the difference here. Yeah. So we, every little bit extra, you know, that we can like squeeze out of this in terms of the big parts, it's gonna make your swing that much stronger and it's gonna support the small parts that much better. Everything's gonna work better. If we can just get 10 degrees you know, more out of the hips and five degrees more out of the shoulders, then we're just in a stronger, stronger position. Looks yeah. really good. So this one on the right is that last one that you just hit. Good, Dude, that's looking really strong. And the reason why it was penetrating and it went straight is because this is the path. This is the path we were swinging on. That's the, the low point. So yeah. that's the, the path we were on. Yeah. Mostly forwards, a little bit low to high. So there's a little bit of lift and a little bit of forward rotation, but not enough that it's like super curvy and spinning. Really strong. You're, you're a good athlete. I, it's just gonna be a matter for you of like being disciplined when you go home to train this. Yeah. You